so in this module i'll talk about what is no sequel why it's important why it's interesting why it's useful why people are using it so uh, let me go through some of the brief history or the background uh, i will just give some background uh, during the last 15 years there has been a tremendous revolution and there has been a tremendous explosion in terms of the usage of the world wide web in terms of the social network facebook twitter and the list goes on and there is a tremendous amount of messages being exchanged over the web over the internet and there has a tremendous amount of access to those messages requirements requirements to access those messages those messages could be what different people had for dinner where they are going for dinner their feedback about different products those messages could be uh, for example the diagnosis of medical results and the list goes on so we see that the data is generated in the form of text very frequently very fast there is a tremendous uh, amount of data being generated and that is not very structured also but the people are very keen and very interested in using and extracting information out of that data so the traditional approach of the database architects sitting behind doors for months or a year and developing and designing that excellent schema that is not going to work because the time is not there to do all of those things so it means that the traditional systems and the traditional approaches are not going to work the good news is that there are applications there are solutions in the market out which can be used like nosql to answer these questions to uh, attend to these requirements to to come up with the solutions and the kind of bad news is bad news in double quotes is that people are not aware of these solutions so that is why nosql is included as part of this course and we'll be spending considerable time on nosql in this course also right now if you look at it over here the common features what are the common features of nosql first of all uh, nosql is schema free you can just get the data and place it into a nosql database you don't have to make the schema and spend time you can do it later you can just put the data in your nosql database uh, nosql is not necessarily required to be relational it is not relational okay it means that you don't have to have tables in which you have to establish the relations because you see when we talk about the tweets when we talk about the comments of the people this that traditional aspect is not there that is not there so it is non relational it is schema free so there is hardly any sql structured query language the third point is the strength of uh, no sql or the core difference of no sql as compared to other solutions is that the no sql database does not require specialized hardware specialized hardware cost a bundle of money so it can run on commodity hardware off the shelf hardware you can combine that hardware and you can scale as the requirement as the load as the size of the project increases and finally the fourth core aspect of no sql is that it is highly distributable it means when the load comes it is distributed across the servers now uh, managing different types of data let me describe no sql very very secondly or a very very brief, briefly and precisely uh, no sql right is not a layer over the relational model no sql is an entirely different beast no sql caters to four different types of data it caters to the the triples it caters to the columnar data it caters it caters to the key data and the list goes on it's very different it's from the relational then the other difference is that or other uh, or other aspect of uh, no sql is that it is selectively consistent it means that the asset property is not re re religiously followed i will explain this in the in the next slide it means that if there is tweet in new zealand 
and Singapore, they are not going to be available immediately in the United States. Selective consistency. And of course, development using NoSQL is very fast and the response is also very good. So let me uh, conclude with MongoDB. I'll talk more about MongoDB. So MongoDB is a one representative or the poster child, so to call, of NoSQL. But people try to use MongoDB for the relational purpose. It is not relational. And finally, I'll talk about the effective indexing in MongoDB. Say, for example, I would like to know the feedback of the users about a certain recipe of a certain, cer certain item, food item, say, for example. My favorite is lamb chops. So I can create an index using the primary key, but I am looking at more things. For example, I would like to know the recipe about the lamb chop which has vinegar, but which does not have soya sauce. So I need to have secondary indexes which are supported by MongoDB. And what that secondary index would have, it would have the ingredient as uh, the key for the searching. It would have the recipe and it would have uh, no soya sauce. So you see, that this results in very powerful indexing and as of today there are about 200 products out there which claim to be NoSQL and one of them is MongoDB which is which is, has been very very popular and kind of representative of the NoSQL paradigm and before I conclude uh, the one another aspect of NoSQL is that it offers four different types of data to be stored so there is going to be one application, one type, which will suit your particular and peculiar needs. That's about it.